In years gone by, the time spent with an instructor was devoted to learning karate techniques, kata, and body conditioning methods, often by means of individual tuition. The student would then practice with his peers under the supervision of more senior students, his progress being monitored by his instructor as his training continued. Building the powerful physique common amongst students of traditional karate was the responsibility of the student himself. In his own time, often using homemade equipment, he would develop the strength and stamina necessary to make his karate technique truly effective. The neophyte was taught that his chosen trade involved not only the business of delivering powerful blows, but also learning how to absorb them while remaining focused and able to fight. With the aid of his equipment, training drills, and ultimately the practice of Sanchin, he worked hard to develop a physique that was both powerfully offensive and defensively effective. The shield of muscle developed by this type of instruction offered effective protection to all but his face and eyes. Severe training developed an unequivocal determination to prevail that was clear from the glare he directed at his enemy. Tiger eyes, designed to heighten his own focus and to distract and unbalance those he faced in combat. This part of the training program included the hardening of the body's natural weapons by systematic conditioning over an extended period. In China, the original home of Pangai Nun, the clenched fist was little used, being considered too easy to counter. Its size also tends to make it effective against the most vulnerable targets on the human body which are, for the most part, small and inaccessible. However, a blow of even moderate force delivered to the eyes, throat, or a nerve point with a fingertip conditioned by years of striking hard surfaces can prove lethal. <laughs> 